Hello, welcome to our newest series, South Carolina State Parks Journey Towards Integration. My name is Infinity and I'm a State Park Historical Interpretive Intern. As many of us are aware, the journey towards civil rights, equality, and equity for all individuals here in the United States has not been an easy or smooth road. The South Carolina State Parks has not always allowed for fair public access for all South Carolina citizens, especially African Americans. In the 1950s and 1960s, South Carolina was in an active fight against racialized segregation rooted in ideologies pertaining to African American inferiority and white supremacy. In 1896, the Supreme Court's ruling in Plessy v. Ferguson set the foundation of separate but equal, which would become the overall racial law of the land. Unfortunately, this ruling formalized separation without actually improving equality. It was almost 70 years later that African Americans were able to achieve full citizenship rights and equal access to public facilities like parks and schools. Although the state parks, which were originally operated by the South Carolina Forestry Commission, would attempt to create separate parks and areas for African American usage, these spaces were often few in number, far in distance, and oftentimes inferior to those of white patrons. In fact, if it wasn't for individuals such as community activists like Dewey R. Jones and Miller F. Whitaker, there would not have been any push for recreational state parks for African Americans within this park system. Separate park areas for African Americans have been in existence since 1938. By the year 1955, there were four park areas and one park designed for African Americans. In 1938, at Greenwood and Hunting Island, there were reserved portions of the park for African American usage. In Shara and Ponset, there were nearby designated areas for African Americans at Campbell's Pond and Mill Creek. Pleasant Ridge State Park in Greenville was the only state park designed for African Americans, which opened in the year 1955. Brown versus the South Carolina Forestry Commission is the court case which led to the South Carolina State Parks being integrated in the year 1965. As you can guess, a lot took place within the nearly 30 year span. Join me throughout this series as we discuss significant events in park and national history. These civil rights events made it possible for all South Carolina residents and visitors to participate and play at any state park that they choose. Our first state park that we'll be visiting is Ponset State Park. 